Okay, hi guys. I am back with another video for Spires of Ascension. Um, this is actually one of my more preferred dungeons, this expansion. I just enjoy it because it feels very straightforward and uh, all of the mechanics seem fine. So it is tyrannical, raging, explosive, weak, and um, usually for a week like this, since it's not fortified, I don't mind getting most of the explosives with Purge because it's very easy for me. But unfortunately on this group, I don't understand Warlocks at all. But okay, yeah, I mean if the Warlock shows up under my interrupts, I'm quite sure he has an interrupt to use. He just didn't want to use it, I guess. Um, but that pull was also just made extra hard because... Everything is raging, so usually, I think this was our second dungeon of the week, and it just reset today on Tuesday. So previously, I had done a run on my mage, and obviously when you're mage, you don't care as much about things like this, so you don't really notice. But, um, okay, quick thing to mention from a priest perspective that I tend to do on this first platform, this Forsworn Mender, as you just saw, he cast in an ability called Imbu Weapon, which basically gives him a buff that you can dispel off. Once you dispel it off, a weapon flies through the air and lands on the ground, and somebody can run over to it and pick it up. There's a lot of melee that don't know about this. Um, every time I do a pug, I try to like type to people to pick up the weapon. They probably still don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So basically, when you run over it, it gives you a fairly good buff. Um, and it's mainly for melee. I believe it just gives you extra damage on your weapon for a couple seconds. But um, I always set that character to focus. That way I can see it and just dispel it off immediately. Um, there's also that burden of knowledge. I believe that applies a dot and debuff in an area because sometimes when that cast goes off, more than one person gets it. Um, yeah, actually, that's one of the casts that I know it. Uh, I only recognize it by icon, but I, I don't really know exactly how it works. See, burden of knowledge. Yeah, I, I just assume it's an area and um, people standing in the area can get it on more than one person, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, another thing to note is that the tank is my friend and the main reason he geared his tank and is playing it more now is so we can actually play the fucking game. So the way WoW works right now is if it is Tyrannical Week, nobody fucking plays because they are pussies and they just naturally think it's too hard. I honestly don't think it's that bad to not play a whole fucking week. Um, another thing is that, yeah, there's just like no tanks playing the game. So I'm not going to sit in queue for more than like 10 to 15 minutes anymore because that's a waste of time. So... The only way we can play the game is if we know somebody that has a tank. So that's the main reason we decided to um, hear some of our alts and play them. Um, I don't feel like there has been much to comment on so far. Everything has been fairly straightforward in terms of um, none of the mobs have anything too special or different. Um, they're all the same from the first platform onto this moment. This first boss is really not bad. Something that I think people are actually unaware of is there's actually a beam. I don't know if you can see it right there. It's not super obvious right now. But there's a beam between the boss and the bird. You don't want to be standing in between it. If you are, you get a stacking dot debuff that does a shitload of damage. You'll most likely die. So for this boss, I always set Kintara to focus. The main reason for that is I want to see when she's about to cast Overhead Slash. And generally, I want to pre-cast a heal for it or immediately have a heal lined up for right after. Another thing that happened earlier, and you'll see again, is she throws a spear that debuffs people when she's on the ground, though. Only when she's on the ground. So when she's in the air, she throws spears at people. Generally, if she targets me with it, I always speed boost myself as it's in the air. That way I'm like only taking maybe the tick of damage initially, this Dark Lance. So this Dark Lance is an area debuff 
So if I ever see more than one person with it, I try to mask the spell it off first. And if I did not place my mask the spell correctly to get both people, then I'll just manually dispel the other person. I don't think I've ever seen three people get it. That would be really, really unlucky. Um, and that just means they're like really stacking in the same area or something. But yeah, this boss, I don't find difficult at all. Um, I hardly spend time healing this boss, I feel like. So it's uh, nice and easy. Your tank just needs to use their cooldowns properly. And not die to overhead slash because there's some tanks like oh the, the run just fails on this boss because they just get one shot by the slash and uh yeah they need to definitely have something for it um the stealth claws are no joke for sure they have that stacking bleed as you can see i believe he will file it off later although honestly i don't really pay attention to that stuff um shit i actually feel like there might be a lot of mobs for this run that I might not feel like I have a lot to say but once he starts kiting I always try to at least throw in like a fear once in a while oh and actually something to note here is that because um the mobs are so spread out and he's kiting them I am aiming my camera this way in order to see if there's any explosives spawning in the back that nobody is going to notice and get um but this whole area just drives me crazy because the trees like i like to play zoomed all the way out but you can't because there's leaves there's trees everywhere and it just blocks your vision which makes it terrible like this first boss it's so hard for me to ever have my camera properly because every angle if i'm zoomed a little bit too far out i see a stupid like leaf or a branch or a tree or some garbage like that so these guys um, I have seen a couple tanks do it. Very, very few do it though. I actually prefer pulling this group at where they're spawned because 90% of the time they get down to this area, they just jump away and they're not grouped up. So they are actually grouped up pretty well here until this one just jumped away. But yeah, like to me, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to line a site group group them up here and then they just fucking jump and spread the thing is um they from what i can tell the tank that did it correctly he would just tank them against the wall in a way like maybe if they only jump backwards then if they jump back into the wall then they're not really going anywhere but i guess it's not the biggest deal it just feels like kind of a waste to you know, spend time line of sighting and then gathering them over there and then they just fucking jump and spread the moment they get there. I, I don't know. <laughs> I like to just run over and do them where they are. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a pride. Well, anyways, for this run, I don't know what it was. I know it's just an 18, but I felt really comfortable with this run. Um, and I feel like I've been going back and forth between Shadow and Disc. Actually, I don't even feel like I've done anything uh, remotely difficult as a healer in a while. Kind of makes me a little sad because I really enjoy the challenge, but... I have also just been trying to play the game in a non not serious way because it's not fun. Um, it's just boring and stressful to try to push keys and always find random people every time. I don't like that at all. And yeah, I just don't find it worth my time anymore to spend so much time trying to push a key or like staying in the group finder so, so here what i was trying to do and it does work if you get far enough is if you have a speed boost and you jump over then that spirally swirly thing will bring you to the other side it's a little bit faster than waiting for these angels but i didn't use this i don't think i used the speed boost so i didn't make it over and it just brought me back that's why i 
sent him the sad face, but he doesn't even know what the fuck I was trying to do. I don't think anybody saw what I was trying to do. Um, these mobs, they cast Insidious Venom, which is a magic debuff dot. And since there's five of them or however many in this pack, I like to generally wait and see if there's going to be multiple debuffs on the tank before I use my dispel because... You don't want to dispel when it's at one stack when you see multiple people. I mean, multiple of them casting it at the same time. Um, this pack is... Alright. I, I think that's the thing about this dungeon. So, unless it's like five mobs, I don't tend to feel that intimidated by the packs in this dungeon. But actually... During this dungeon, I forgot about raging a, a lot. Of, and um, I think I also just kept having the wrong perception that the tank can handle a lot of it. Because he he's actually doing really well, I'd say. He feels like a, a real tank to me. Like, obviously, he's a real tank. But he's um, undergeared. So... Our alts, we pretty much like leveled them and geared them around the same time. Although he started playing his Demon Hunter way earlier than I did. Because for a while I was like, this Fire Mage rotation is boring. Um, I enjoy playing Shadow more than Fire. I still do. Um, but yeah, his Demon Hunter is like item level 214 or something. And he's actually really not that bad to heal. He is better to heal than some of these other players that I've played with. I just remember this one time, there was this Demon Hunter with really, really high item level. I think it was like 227 in Q for a higher key, like maybe 1819, like not, not a super low key. So when I invited him, I was like, wow, I don't expect this guy to take any damage. And it was like the complete opposite. It was miserable healing him. I had to like spam him way more than i expected to that gear was like pretty much a fucking waste or he just went like full offensive spec and like wanted to be a damage dealer instead of using defensives i don't know but um yeah oh did anybody just see the cat drifting to the side yeah does anyone see that cat what the fuck is that the hunter's pet what the hell? Anyways, I don't know. I don't even understand how hunters fucking work anymore. They just don't have pets anymore. They don't even play BM. Or if they play BM, like, all of their pets are on the screen and they're just a distraction. Mm, for these cats, um, I am surprised he face tanked them for as long as he did. I thought that he would have started kiting them much sooner. But honestly, that's another thing. I'm just... I don't know tank cooldowns well at all. Uh, I guess the only tank cooldowns that I know are warriors because I have mine. <laughs> and I played it for a tiny bit. I was considering leveling her. But um, yeah, you don't come across a lot of warrior tanks before. Now you might because they got a buff or something. And apparently they're best now. But who gives a fuck about that? Um, yeah, I just, I love Boone. People ask me all the time if I'd consider switching covenants. I love Boon, and actually, I'm still trying to improve at using it more. So later on, you'll see that I use it on the third boss. Uh, yeah, for some reason, I, I still have a little bit of difficulty viewing it as a spell that's not reserved just for prides. It's such a good fucking spell. By the time it depletes, you're going to top everybody off with Atonement, and... The damage is actually just not negligible whatsoever. So here I tried to mess a spell that debuff off. Only got one person and had to use my own personal dispel on the other one. Um, also another thing just to mention, I am using a companion that's not ideal. So the thing is, since I'm switching back and forth between Shadow and Disc right now, um, uh, like, right, for, it's okay. <laughs> for Kyrian, Pelagos is the best companion for both. His tree is the best. Um, the pro okay, this, that Wild Spirits made 
me so sad. I'm sure it also made the hunter very fucking sad because he didn't move it back in. Anyways, um, yeah, if I don't have enough energy to switch back and forth between shadow and disc, then I am using Clea on, uh, for healing. And I guess the way that I kind of see it is that like, it's really important to have the correct companion as shadow. That way I can do as much DPS as I can. But for healing, uh, I kind of, like, maybe it's the wrong way to view it, right? Because whenever I think of healing, I think of, oh, I don't need a pot because I'm not doing damage. Oh, these side buffs are helpful, but, but like, since I'm just healing people, they're not as important, but they are. But, oh, so, all right. <laughs> that grip was really awkward. I did that because he got low. And I, yeah, actually, I don't fucking know why I gripped him. I should have saved the grip for later because I actually think that was uh, detrimental. I definitely needed that grip for later. I just feel like he got really chunked on pull and I was afraid and I just used it on him. I also had no defensives for this pull whatsoever, which does suck. Um, I guess the way that I've been healing, I have not been trying to like reserve a cooldown or anything like if i have it up and i feel like there's a decent amount going a uh, decent amount of damage going out then i will use it another thing that i'm a little bit annoyed about for myself at least on this poll is i think i should not have wasted globals on those explosives because i am pretty sure that led to the tank dying um and that's just really unfortunate another thing to note is um i'm pretty sure the mage disconnected so he did not ice block i would like to think if he was alive and in the game he would have ice blocked but that i i type it out in a little bit but that part really annoyed me that the hunter died because he has turtle up and by the time he died, our tank was battle resed by me. So by the time the tank came back up, everybody else was alive, but he was struggling to get aggro. That always happens, right? When the tank dies, it's really tough for him to just regain aggro out of the blue. So it's up to other people to use defensives to stay alive until he's able to get aggro back. Bane death, turtle, whatever. Um, from what I remember when I was watching this clip earlier, the hunter just backpedaled while mobs ran at him and smacked him, and I hate that shit. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure 90% of hunters that I've ever played with don't turtle, like, at all. I don't see them ever use it. So, actually, the other day, when I was doing a plague fall with a hunter, I actually complimented the shit out of him because... Um, in Plaguefall, there's those ambushers. They spawn stealthlings. Those stealthlings remain in stealth unless you hit them with a source of damage, and they cast ambush. So basically, it was fortified week last week. If they finish casting ambush on somebody, whoever they target is most likely dead if most of those stealthlings are alive. So what happened was we either didn't have the damage or we didn't have an interrupt for those stealthlings cast. So it was about to go off and the hunter in the group pre-cast a turtle just in case he was being targeted. So I will admit, whenever I do that dungeon, I don't target the stealthlings to see who they're going to jump. I just know whoever their jump is going to get fucked. So in that case, I would always rather just use something just in case you're targeted, right? So he got targeted, but he turtled and took no fucking damage. And I was like, wow, you are literally a genius because I don't ever see hunters use tur turtle. It's like that do doesn't fucking exist for them. So here he decided to pull the other two um, mid pride because, yeah, we still needed to clear them out before the boss. Um, this is actually I forgot this happened because when I was watching the boss only earlier, I was like, wow, this boss is taking a really long time. But yeah, we had to spend some of our pride duration 
on these cats, which is a little bit unfortunate. But I guess the most important part, let me see, let me see. Yeah, okay, so the most important part though is, as you can see, we have heroism for most of the pride. Like by the time we used heroism, there was maybe like 26, 27 seconds left on the buff. So I still think that is pretty decent. Um, right here, he jumped me with a bleed. I used file on it. I will actually say... I would say that if you have a way to remove it, I feel like you should. Because if you remove it, then I can spend more time DPSing the boss. And then that can result in the boss just dying faster ending the fight faster um i guess what you can counter that with is if you as the player fuck up then you don't have your defensive to live when you're low but um i don't know i just i do feel like it can be better to just like remove it completely like one time when a mage ice blocked it off for me i just never see mages do, doing that so i really liked that he did that um what does really annoy me about this boss is that these orbs are very inconsistent. I hate that. So there's times where they skim by me and they don't hit me. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm safe. But then there's other times where, like, see, the one that just hit me, there have been times where they pass me and don't hit me and deal damage. So that's what I mean by inconsistent. I don't like that. It's very unpredictable which one will hit you and which one will like not hit you um that one was obvious definitely hit me but i feel like well so our damage looked a little low but also we were missing say like 20 seconds of pride on boss that can be also what contributes to that um but what's really important on that boss is the placement of the orb so from what yeah 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 so she drops it where she's standing, which is basically where the tank is tanking her. So I think what he was trying to do was he wanted her to drop two of them before he moved her. That's what people tend to do, I think, the most common one. But some tanks, I don't know if they do a strategy for that at all, but they kind of just tank her wherever. And depending on where the orbs are, they can become really, really difficult to dodge if they're coming from every direction right but if you stack them i don't know i i do like the stacking method this mob does a fair amount of aoe damage but really should not be difficult so this is raging and yeah it's not fortified on fortified maybe it's a little bit bad yeah this aoe started hitting a little bit hard when she raged but she died shortly afterwards so no big deal. So at the top of the stairs, I always sue the rightmost mob because, um, yeah, we always skip. So I always jump up from over here, sue the mob. He actually started pulling a lot earlier than I expected, but... That's probably not the worst thing because if he's like the only one running over, then they will tend to target him. Because the thing is, as the tank is running over and while they're targeting him to hurl, once he outranges them, they will target somebody else. So if you are running over afterwards, um, there's a likelihood that they can definitely kill you while you're in transit. So it can be a little bit tricky if you don't have an easy invis to get across. Um, so this boss, I have talked about in a couple videos before, but I will say that he does make me nervous because he is one of the few bosses in this dungeon, eh, pretty much the only boss in this dungeon where I know that I will go out of mana if I do not manage my spells well, which means that I need to be using all of my casts very smart and I need to minimize how many times I'm using Shadow Mend. So something that I try to do, anytime he's using Purifying Blast on somebody, I want to shield them before it goes off. And the reason I want to do that is just to hopefully apply Atonement first and then get that 3% damage reduction. You know, just anything helps. Um, 
Yeah, so what I do tend to do is the moment, uh, I, I'd say maybe if there's like three seconds left on somebody's debuff, I stop direct healing them, unless they're going to die, of course. And I just kind of like, you know, let them sit at whatever health they're at and let Atonement heal them up, assuming that they're not being targeted by the next Purifying Blast. Of course, if they are targeted by the next Purifying Blast, then I will make sure to direct heal them above 50% because that's usually the damage threshold. You cannot melt this. I think I've tried that before. So this part, I was like super on point with that Master Spell because, well, the Mage had Cauterize, but I would say the next tick on that if he did not shield himself, would have killed him. But the fact that three people got that stomp is really bad. <laughs> like, imagine if I was not a Disc Priest and had Master Spell. Two people with that ticking charge stomp would be just... Like, because you can see there's so much damage going out on this boss, and it's a fairly long fight. So for me to have to spend my mana on extra shit that I don't need to is just really uh, stressful. And then the tank just almost died there from the stomp damage miserable bleh, miserable fight to heal i would also say that my radiance usage there was bad and a waste and i actually felt that way as i was casting it because the two people that had damage taken was i believe the warlock in the tank and they were not standing anywhere near each other, so I'm pretty sure only one person got the heal from Radiance because of proximity. And I was also a little bit annoyed about holding PI so long this fight because the boss is almost dead, and I was trying to, I think, sync it with a mage. I think that his first combust, it might have been on cooldown still, like I can't remember. But yeah, I'm... I'm a little amazed that I kept everybody alive on this uh, on this fight because I'm like completely oom right now and people were still taking damage from Purifying Blast and whatnot. But um, yeah. Oh, I, I guess something I do want to mention is like I think you saw earlier I used a barrier um, and it was when the Warlock and the Hunter, they got hit by the same Purifying Blast. That is bad. You never, ever, ever want to get more than one person taking damage from that. That dot tick is crazy. Um, but the thing is, even if it was only one person taking damage from it, I would say be very loose with using your cooldowns because... Yeah, like I said, you don't want to be direct healing as much and you want to try to reduce damage. So for barrier, here's an ideal situation for barrier. If the melee, if you have melee in your group and they are targeted for purifying blast, then barrier for that would be really great because then you can get both the tank and the melee DPS in the same barrier taking reduced damage. But if you don't have an ideal situation like that, just throwing a barrier on anybody that's taking um, the dot tick from purifying, like maybe even before the cast is going out, throw it out on the area for whoever is being targeted. And then, yeah, that's just kind of what I mean. So, for example, if the tank was not going to die on the last pull, like you saw that he basically was at, he had no health <laughs> in his bar. He probably had like, I don't know, 10 health or something. I threw pain suppression on him, but if that didn't help, if that didn't happen, I most likely would have tossed pain suppression on somebody who was targeted by purifying blast. So that's kind of just what I mean, because for the most part, um, I don't feel like I need to babysit the tank that much. So I would just rotate my cooldowns of use rapture fairly early on somebody who is um, taking damage from the blast. Um, cycle between that I have boon so boon is actually something that I would most likely try to use on non recharge phase so I know he takes more damage during recharge but usually the most damage is going out while he's active and throwing out purifying blast so if I am a little bit worried about being able to keep somebody up then I can just always use boon for one of the uh, casts because basically the way that boss works is 
he targets somebody, he throws the blast, right? They take initial heavy damage and then they tick heavily also for quite a while after. And then he just kind of cycles through that. So there's never one person that's, I mean, there's never multiple people taking damage at the same time. At most, it's always just two, right? Tank and whoever gets targeted. But um, maybe I would say actually uh, the second purifying blast or the third, then you could use um, Boon for that because then the previous targets might not be topped off just yet and they will benefit from your Boon. But also another thing for this, these uh, mini bosses that I've started to do that I'm kind of liking is I just, honestly, I just move towards the, well, you'll see right here. So I go around and then I go to this inner side. So I don't want to trap myself on the other side, right? Because as the spears keep going out, then you have less and less space to go. But if I'm always towards the inner side, I have like way more space. And then I can also position my camera and distance, put my character at a distance where I can clearly see where those beams are coming from. And then I can just dodge them easily. So um, yeah, before I feel like I was getting hit by them a lot, but I feel pretty confident about how I'm positioning myself now. Um, and even the one before this last one, the second one, I, I don't know. They don't really seem that bad anymore. <laughs> I don't think I use a barrier on this pride. Yeah, actually, I feel like for keys, maybe for a 19, I would use a barrier for pride or think to. I feel like 18s, I usually just view them as like not that bad. So for 18s, I don't feel like I need to use anything but Boon on Pride. That's assuming DPS isn't complete garbage. Oh, I do use a barrier here. Really unnecessary though, because he was at like 5%. I felt, I thought that way as well. Like when I used it, I was like, oh, that's <laughs> complete waste because he's pretty much dead. Um, Devis, I don't think she's that bad at all. Um, she's only bad during Grievous, which is a garbage ethics anyways. But yeah, like all of her stuff is predictable. So right here, you see that I try to time my radiance. Like basically the second the cast goes off, my radiance finishes cast. But the thing is, she always debuffs people after the first cast and then i will dispel one person first and then after the cooldown is back up i will always dispel the second person because the debuff lasts long enough i think it's like a i don't know it's pretty long so i will always still want to dispel the second one because it's 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 a dot right why not um i always save rapture for the air phase because yeah, there's nothing to hit. I don't want to be spamming Shadow Mend. And honestly, there's really no other reason to use Rapture. Yes, you can use Rapture right before detonation. But I, I don't know. I don't really think that's necessary because right after detonation is over, there's no damage going out outside of that debuff. And then I just dispel one and then all that's left is the other one that I'll dispel off in a couple seconds. Mass Dispel, I pretty much always try to reserve it for after the air phase is over. I tell people, you know, stack up so I can dispel everybody. So yeah, you'll see I'll just try to cast it right away after. But yeah, another thing to keep in mind is I am pretty sure, like, I don't know. If your DPS is bad, then she might get three Abyssal Detonations off. But I'm assuming that she debuffs you every other Abyssal because she will not debuff you here. See? She does the first one and then... Uh, yeah, I think she's going to go into the air before another cast goes off. So I won't be able to see. Oh, random. Random, random, random. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it's time-based instead of always after detonation but i mean i guess the good thing is that just 
you don't need to expect it after every single detonation. The first one, just be ready to dispel one person immediately. Um, but then for the second one, I know that I don't need to expect it. Yeah, she's really not that bad. Oh, and uh, another thing that I don't know if people care about, but I have, <laughs> I've tried to disperse her abyssal. Uh, you're not gonna live. I forget. It just does a really a lot, a lot of damage. I don't even know. But seventy five percent is not enough. Ice block, on the other hand, mages have so many amazing defensives. Uh, ice block is so unfair. I can't believe they nerfed disperse. It used to be like ninety something percent. Now it's like seventy five. Um. I don't feel like I said a lot of useful stuff for this run, but I feel like the mobs here are, yeah, really straightforward that there's really not much to talk about. They don't have special casts. They do. There's stuff you need to dispel, but like you just remark on it and then you move on. Um, obviously, the Goliaths are no joke. You just need a, um, an interrupt rotation for that. But I think that's also why I like this dungeon because it's very straightforward. That's it. 